estimated that today and every school day, 160,000 students stayed home from school because they were afraid of being bullied. It's a nationwide problem that can have deadly consequences. Hi, this is Jamie from Buffalo, New York, and I'm just here to tell you that it does get better. A teenager named Jamie Rodemeyer may be the latest. Just weeks ago, the 14-year-old freshman from Buffalo, New York, hanged himself. He had been teased and bullied for years. Well, tonight, News Channel 18 is getting involved with a special effort to help students and parents. Our Dan Klein has the details. Dan? Heartbreaking is the word you hear over and over when you talk to parents and teachers about bullying. Stats show that almost one in five students will be bullied this week. Perhaps the worst part? For someone like Tasha Engel, it's a problem that can go undiscovered by adults for years. People just said, I wish you was dead. I wish like, I could like, meet you up so bad. Tasha Engel was living a teenage nightmare. The bullying began years ago in the sixth grade, mostly verbal, with vicious rumors spread behind her back, sometimes to her face. I thought of killing myself. Like right here, like right here. Instead, to cope, she started cutting herself in the eighth grade. Her grandmother, Margie, the only mother she's ever known, had no idea. It only came to the surface after Tasha got into a fight at school. I was devastated. I thought for sure I was going to lose her. I mean, I was terrified to sleep at night. Tasha says the bullying is much better now that she's a freshman at McCutcheon High School. But even so, it's not totally gone away. I just want the school to put a stop to kids being bullied. I mean, it, it's ridiculous that these children has to go through this. McCutcheon principal John Beaker says he's doing all he can, but it's a problem that will never completely go away. A bullying link on the school's website connects directly to his email. Gossip. Where does gossip fall in all this? Beaker runs a monthly diversity group meeting, which largely focuses on bullying. He gets feedback on problem areas, like which hallways are unsupervised, and also trains students on how to help, especially the people who are bullied. Put your arm around that kid or just go say, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Is there any way I can help? Those are the things, those are the ways we're trying to teach our kids at McCutcheon. According to a survey of 200 McCutcheon sophomores last spring, four in five say bullying is a problem here. One in five say they know someone who's afraid to come to McCutcheon because of harassment. And most concerning to Principal Beaker, almost half say they're uncomfortable telling a staff member about bullying or harassment. That's troubling. We, we, we can't have that. We have to have our staff listening, following through on things that they're hearing. He estimates twice a week a student will come to him saying he or she has been bullied. About half are legitimate, mostly freshmen, girls a little bit more than boys. Learning from his own mistakes in the past, he says, Following up is key. If you think that you just had this magical 15 minute conversation with two kids and off they go and you don't check on them two weeks later, you have not completed the cycle. But with increasing frequency, there's a type of bullying that goes on outside the hallways. It happens in the supposed safety of the home, on the computer, through emails and Facebook. It's called cyberbullying something that may have played a role in Rhoda Meyer's death. Cyberbullying, nobody has a complete handle on that yet. It also breaks my heart thinking that a kid just got off of Facebook at 10.30 at night and now they're going to bed with those thoughts in their mind. A classmate sent Tasha a threatening remark on Facebook. Margie told the child's parents. Later, the boy called back to apologize. Ever since, Margie keeps a close eye on Tasha's online activity and checks her text messages too. It hurt, it hurt me so bad because I don't understand why they was mistreating her. If I was a bully and I saw how bad people was, how bad it hurt people that I was bullying, I would stop. It's not fully stopped for Tasha yet. She attends a weekly support group and occasionally talks with a counselor. But she wants her story told to help others see the light at the end of the tunnel. I just feel like I have a new life now. To like have different friends, a new environment to get close to people. Now, a story like this could be told at every high school, middle school, and even elementary school in this area. We've unveiled a special link on the upper right-hand corner of our homepage to help students, parents, and even teachers know what to do. We posted warning signs to look for, even toll-free hotline numbers. Also on our website, WLFI.com, there's the full survey from McCutcheon and results, some interactive pieces, and a story on how Principal Beaker punishes bullies and what you can expect from your school. Now, I'm going to be following this story up next week, and I want to hear from you. Have you been bullied? How did you handle it? What worked and what didn't work? 
So please send me an email at dan.klein at wlfi.com or you can look me up on Facebook and send me a message there. I look forward to hearing from you. Dan Klein, News Channel 18.